Hi everyone, today I'll show you how you can test your circuits in a simulator without the risk of burning your components. If you are new around here, consider subscribing. I make weekly videos where I explore making, electronics and code. I recently came across a circuit of a latching switch design that was different than what I've seen before. Usually, these kind of circuits use one PNP and one NPN transistor where they are wired to simulate a thyristor. However, this one used two NPN transistors so I've decided to give it a go. After several failed attempts on a breadboard, I wasn't sure what was really happening so I decided to use a simulator to test out the circuit. My go-to choice for a simulator is this online based one built by Paul Falstad. You can find a link to it in the video description. The simulator is an amazing piece of software where you can truly see what's going on with your circuit. Additionally, you can choose to monitor voltages and current on any spot in the circuit as well as visually see where the current is flowing. To start using it, you can select all of the defaulted components and delete them. To add a component, you right click with the mouse and you can then choose what is it that you want to add. When selected, you can then click anywhere and add the component or a wire while dragging with the mouse. At the beginning, it can be a little tricky to get everything to line up, but once you get a hold of it, it is not that difficult. To make it easier to draw, some of the most used components also have shortcuts that are attached to them, so instead of picking a resistor all the time, you can press R on the keyboard and immediately start drawing a resistor in the circuit. When you add a component, by right clicking on it, you can choose to edit it and adjust its properties. By default, the simulation is active from start, so as soon as you start placing and connecting components, you can see the current flow. If you want, you can prevent this by choosing to stop the simulation from the button at the top right corner. Once I finished the circuit, I could immediately see that because of the combination of resistors, one of the transistors will always be on no matter the state of the push button, thus explaining the actual behavior I was seeing when I've built it on a breadboard. Without the simulator, I had the doubt that maybe it was my fault and I didn't connect the circuit properly, but now I know that not everything that is on the internet is correct. If you have any suggestions how we can maybe fix the latching circuit, then please let me know down in the comments. Like the video if it was beneficial and most importantly subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. Cheers and thanks for watching.